I, from the very beginning, I, I said I was going to fight this disease and I was going to win. I was born in Kokomo on December 6, 1971. Right away, the doctors found out that I had severe hemophilia. Normally, when you get cut, your blood starts to clot in less than 12 minutes, but my blood takes 30 or 40 minutes to clot, which is so slow that if I got cut, I could bleed to death. The day after my birthday, Friday, was particularly bad. I spent the whole weekend sleeping on the couch. I was coughing so much I was out of breath. When mom took my temperature and discovered that it was 103 degrees, we took a fast trip to the local hospital. But when we got to Riley, the doctors rushed me into intensive care and told mom I might have tuberculosis, lung cancer, or AIDS. They ruled out TB almost immediately, so mom found herself actually praying that my problem might be just cancer. Jean, it means Ryan has AIDS. Just that spring, scientists had figured out that AIDS is caused by a virus which gets into your blood. Once it's been there long enough, it knocks out your immune system, which is made up of particular types of cells in your blood that usually help you fight off illness. Right now, there is no vaccine or any other kind of medicine that rids your body of the AIDS virus. After the first couple of cases of AIDS, um, we, they, they changed the way they were doing things and testing blood. I think that happened pretty darn quick. A lot of people just still assumed with him that he got it um, because he did something wrong and that wasn't the way it was. community banned him from school. I don't think he should be here. If people with chicken pox and measles can't come, why should he? There's been a lot of rumors that um, when he gets mad, he spits on people. They call you a queer or stuff like that. And you get people who throw away your dishes. Throw away your dishes? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Because, you know, I mean, I wouldn't want really to eat off somebody else's dish either. You know, and it's been washed, so that's all there is to it. His superintendents, um, asked him at some point to, they could not support having him in school because he was such a distraction. A lot of parents were keeping their kids home because they thought even being in a classroom with him was gonna cause them to get AIDS. Well, let me talk to Ryan. Ryan got on the phone. He said, Ryan, do you really wanna go to school that bad? He said, cause it's rough. He said, I wanna go back to school. People, after a while, started to listen and saw, you know, bad turn into good. And um, he really made a difference. I mean, there was a lot of stigma around how HIV and AIDS was transmitted. And, you know, Ryan was one of the people that um, got it from a blood transfusion. So he was able to um, put a face to it that not everybody um, recognizes what AIDS was. Despite the hostility he faced, Ryan still wanted to go to school. But the more he persisted, the more he became a target. He was hounded and harassed, and then came the violence. People slashed the white tires and shot a bullet through their living room window. It's Hamilton Heights High School, Cicero, Indiana, were the heroes. and. Um, you know, 
they were, I agree with that, but there was also still that small group of people. His first day at Hamilton Heights High School and he um, sat down beside me in science class, which was the first period of the day. Um, and he asked if he could borrow a pencil and I laughed at him because I thought, oh my gosh, this boy who, like, the, the news followed him to school. People Magazine was there and he didn't even have a pencil. Nervous at all this morning? Oh, yeah. I was terribly nervous. What do you feel like now? I feel like I'm going to fall asleep. Yeah, I'm going to fall I recently announced my intention to create a national commission on AIDS because of the consequences of this disease on our society. We need some comprehensive answers. So it was the day before spring break. It was a Friday and he was going to California and I was going to Purdue University to have my sister who was going to college there help me pick out a prom dress. Um, because Ryan had asked me to prom, which was going to be a few weeks later. Maybe I was a naive teenager, but I didn't see it deteriorate. He actually got sick pretty sudden. We learned so much so quickly with him. Um, we were we were able to talk to him and be with him, but um, there wasn't a lot of communication back. So it was very quick. Um, I was super shocked, and obviously we weren't able to go to prom. There's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't think about him, and I teach my kids about him. And you know, kids today don't even under can't even put their head around why people would do those kinds of things to him. So we've come a long way. Um, and so for that, I'm grateful. Inside the church, more tears and assurances that Ryan's life has left a lasting impression on people, like classmates who are members of the girls' choir at Hamilton Heights High School. At first, Ryan and the diseased were perceived as one and the same. And as we all discovered, they were so very far apart. It was Ryan who first humanitized the disease called AIDS. What did Ryan mean to you? Um, strength, honesty, and integrity. Really? We learned more as a society. I think people really started to finally have that compassion that he so deserved when he was alive that he didn't get. The viewpoint has changed in that it is no longer a death sentence that it used to be. It used to be if you had HIV, it would progress into AIDS pretty quickly. And then once you got AIDS, you were going to die. And now people are living long, healthy lives with HIV infections before it even turns into AIDS because of the advances we made really because of Ryan White and the donations that continue to come to this day.
once for all.